Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India When you start describing the motion of the rotor blade in forward flight, you can refer to several planes in the sense reference frame. See this is a rotor shaft axis and this is actually swash plate. Then there is a tip path plane okay. and this is perpendicular to the flight path. You can have a flight path and then whatever is the oncoming velocity you can define a coordinate system with respect to that. Now you can have several coordinate systems, but for ease of formulation you have to decide what you are choosing and if you decide to choose a particular coordinate system then you have to stick to that throughout the development of forward flight equations because the blade is flapping lead lag torsion about the hub and the blade also is given a pitch angle which is varying as it goes around the azimuth okay. and more complicated situation which the fuselage itself is moving up and down three translation three rotation. So, this is the actual full dynamics. Now, if you because the roll or pitch and yaw motion plus up and down this can be any large angle also. So, you have to describe the motion of the blade get the loads on that transfer to the hub and then how the fuselage will move unless you are very systematic in the development it becomes quite complicated. So, what normally done normally in the sense it depends on the person who uses that, but it is preferable to choose the hub plane that means hub plane is I am choosing the shaft axis. So, the shaft is there hub is there. Okay. So, I decide that my coordinate system is fixed all right and with respect to that coordinate system only I will start describing all the motions ok. So, coordinate system you will say if this is the hub this is my z axis and I may have my x and my y and the blade can be inclined flap it can do anything it wants, but my motion is described in this plane in the sense this is my reference plane which is same as what I do in the fuselage because this is attached to the fuselage. So, once you decide this frame you can say this is parallel to the CG frame also if you want, but it can be little different also. But when you are calculating the aerodynamic load what we have learnt in aerodynamics is you have an airfoil there is an oncoming flow and there is an angle of attack maybe and you get the lift and drag. But in the present case you will have of course, you have a normal flow because this is not the only flow you are going to have a flow like this which is due to the inflow plus the motion of the blade ok because the blade is flapping up and down that means there is a relative velocity due to flap motion and then this is 
all these are in the plane of the aerofoil please understand that is if you cut a section of the blade that section you are describing all these aerodynamic loads okay but my blade when it rotates so i'll write some this is the hub this is my capital x and here that is coming that is the hub plane which i have drawn but if i look at view it from the top my blade may be going like this i am drawing only the projection of the blade which is in this okay but actually i'll call this as maybe x1 y1 x1 y1 z1 is actually a rotating coordinate system it rotates with the blade blade means but the blade can flap now if i look at uh, from y1 assuming i am viewing from y1 i will have this is my x1 this is my z1 and my blade can be like this. this is my flap beta so i call this as x2 z2 and y is into the is it clear so you see i am defining several coordinate systems because the idea is if you are very clear about that this is the most i would call it the simplest problem hover is the simplest of all the cases and when you go to forward flight taking only flap motion is the simplest but if you want to really understand the full if you understand this then you will learn more and more as you go along if you are interested in this field otherwise it stops right here okay because if you have all the other motions here we are not in this what we develop now we assume the blade is only flapping okay that means it is coming out of the plane of hub okay i define that flap as the angle beta x2 y2 now you see which is my if i look at this is my airfoil cross section of the rotor blade my x2 is coming out here okay because that is a cross section of the blade and i know aerodynamic theory is for the section so i will simply apply when i want to get the aerodynamic loads i use this with what is the angle i am having with respect to this is the u tangential this is u perpendicular okay and then of course i get the induced angle of attack so i will subtract finally i will get a lift and drag in this frame in the z2 x2 frame the lift and then i again transfer back to if i want to get the hub loads i have to transfer back the aerodynamic load which is getting in this axis system i should transfer back to the this system okay so we have a transformation of coordinates which we have to apply very systematic these are all all orthogonal system okay so the transformation you just use so you define motion in one coordinate system and then you describe the position vector velocity then you get the aerodynamic load and again you can transfer back so if you are very systematic okay then you will find everything follows a 
very clear cut procedure. But most of the books, as a matter of fact, no book, they do not give any of these things. They will finally write this is the velocity component, okay. But in writing that component, they make lot of assumptions. So, what we will do is we will use this, I will go through the math part here up to some point, describe how you really get the lift, drag, moment, everything and how they are converted and then what approximations we make and at the end of it, you will get loads here like your thrust and you will have a longitudinal force, you will have a lateral force, you will have moment also, yaw moment, pitch moment, roll moment, everything will come in forward flight, okay. And that is where the, uh, the key development in forward flight is first part. And this is like assuming my helicopter is in a steady level flight, steady that means it is flying with the constant speed, okay. Now before we go to describe a little bit, I wanted to show you uh, just a brief, very brief introduction to modeling the blade. Because if you remember right at the beginning of the course, we mentioned the blade is attached to the hub and then there is a, if it is articulated you have a flap hinge and you have a lead lag hinge and you have a pitch bearing. And in the case of a hingeless, you do not have any hinge, but you have a pitch bearing because you need to change the pitch angle of the blade cyclically as it goes around. Now this is a very interesting thing, in this diagram there is a rotor shaft, blade is attached to the hub, but it is very schematic, I am just showing the schematic. I put the flap hinge near the root after that lead lag hinge, after that the feathering, feathering is the pitch bearing, please understand. They are kept in a different particular sequence moving from the root to the blade and the feathering axis is the axis about which you change the angle of attack of the blade, basically the pitch angle of the blade by moving this control because if you move it up or down, you change the pitch angle, okay. This is a schematic and now is this really important that they have to be in this sequence, okay. No, it need not be because if you take hingeless blade, there is no hinge, right. Hinge is somewhere in the design of the blade. When you make the blade, you make it such that this portion acts like a hinge, but you will change the pitch angle here by putting some bracket and taking it, you rotate here, okay. That means your pitch bearing is inboard of flap and lag hinges, okay. In this case, it is outboard of flap and lag hinges, please understand inboard, outboard. So, what, what is the big deal you can ask? If it is an outboard, suppose flap hinge is this, it is flapping like this. If my pitch is outboard, I will change the pitch angle to any value, but the flap hinge will not rotate, it will be still in the same. So, it will blade will flap like this. On the other hand, if my pitch is here, flap is outboard, if I rotate, the flap will be going, then the blade will flap like this, you follow. Now these are very, very critical, okay. So we will learn about these things slowly later. If you have outboard, if you have inboard, what happens, okay because that introduces something called a structural coupling. 
because flap is what? Flap is an out of plane motion of the blade. This is the hub plane, but the blade will instead of going like this, it will go like this. That means you have both up motion, lag motion. So, you have essentially coupled flap lag motion. Okay. You have a coupling, but is it beneficial or is it detrimental? Unfortunately, it is beneficial in some case, it is detrimental in some other case. Okay. So, these studies have been performed earlier and then that is why the choice of the rotor for a particular helicopter, the industry, they go by their experience and what they have learnt in designing one rotor system, they will stick to the same thing. Only thing is when they went from articulated, because articulated rotor was there in all most of the articulated rotors. I do not know, you may correct me, the pitch bearing is outboard. In the Chita Chetak it is outboard or inboard? Outboard. Inboard? Outboard. Whereas in the hingeless it goes inboard. Inboard it introduces coupling. So you change from articulated to a hinge blade. It is not that I take it and I put it and then okay, let me try what happens. Because if you try what happens, the blade may break because of the aeroelastic coupling. It is a very, very complex, all are very small effects only, please understand. That is why I am just giving you a glimpse of the physics involved in this. But later we will, uh, time permits, we will introduce a little bit. But in the beginning, when we are starting, what do you do for this? Okay. And then the question is, where is the hinge? Is the hinge right here or here? Here it is moved from the hub. So, as a first approximation, please understand. Now, this is where I say first approximation, I do not bother about any of these things. I will simply say all of them are coincident and sitting there right at the center, at the center of the hub. So, I consider only flapping motion, somehow I can change the pitch angle, that is all. I do not consider my flap axis is tilting, there is no lead lag motion. Okay. These are assumptions I am making right at the, that is why I said reality when you see, when you try to model, when you see some of the literature or books or anything, there will be tremendous gap between what is there, what is modeled, because you make assumptions lots of assumptions. So, the first assumption which we make in modeling the rotor blade is it is centrally hinged right? and I am changing the pitch angle. This is the flap centrally hinged it is. Okay. Later we will study blade modeling after we finish the forward flight which will take a few lectures then we will go to blade modeling. So, right now for our development, we make this approximation that and here you see, I make coincident hinges, flap and lag same. Actually, there is an interesting thing, they made a blade because most of the analysis we do coincident, they, we do not distinguish between this end, that end, lead lag hinge, flap hinge, they are all the same place, but technically they can be at different place. So, what was done is they made a blade, designed the hub such that the flap and lag hinge exactly at the same location and then tested it and then they introduced the different things to see the effect of all this on the blade dynamics. Okay. Now, having known, made the assumption we now look at it, this is the feathering, please understand what is the axis, again I go here. When the blade flaps, okay, this axis is going up, that means I change my pitch angle along this axis, I do not change the pitch angle 
about this axis because if I change the pitch angle here what will happen the blade will go in a conical path even though I may rotate here the blade will do like this okay and these are all very small things but they have tremendous aeroelastic effects you have to model them properly. So the rotation about what axis you are giving okay we make very simple assumption now we rotate the pitch axis only along the blade axis not about some other axis and that is and this is what I put phi and phi is of course elastic torsion plus in this case we take it there is no twist of the blade happening by elastic twist normally those things happen please under that is why I put flap lead lag elastic torsion all of them are happening on the blade but I throw everything I say only flap is happening there is no phi but theta is the pilot input and that is there he gives and the blade experiences that variation as it goes round and round okay. So these are the basic things which you have to know and now I will go to one more view graph I have written here the same diagram a little bit more. So you see this is my hub plane x y z and the rotation vector is along the shaft that is the hub plane okay and the blade centrally hinged and it is flapping beta and the pitch angle is theta and uh, pitch angle is given by this expression you know that this is the pilot input collective two cyclic one c one s okay now my hub system is what I have what are the forces okay which I have to calculate later I will when I derive then you will know this is my again hub axis x y z even though I put a circle the blade is not in this okay this is a hub plane I have a h force which is along the x axis please note the convention is helicopter is flying like this x is behind okay towards the tail at the hub and y and this is the c and I define my mu v cosine alpha over omega r you know that velocity because earlier we said only some rotor disc now I am defining my mu in the hub plane alpha is the tilt of the helicopter because helicopter normally when it flies forward okay I have exaggerated okay leave that part this is my I have exaggerated okay this angle that is the longitudinal axis to the earth you can take it or the oncoming flow you define the oncoming flow as alpha you are now your hub plane is what this is your hub plane this is your V right because the helicopter is flying forward what do you do in the hub plane you will have V cosine alpha right and normal to the hub plane you will have a V sine alpha and of course you will have an induced velocity also now you know induced velocity is defined 
normal to the hub plane in the formulation. Okay, I am not really looking at tip path plane, nothing. Please understand. Then the, you can define the tip path plane with respect to the hub plane. Okay, it is very easy because tip path plane, whatever is the 1c, beta 1c, that is the tip path plane. Okay. So, you see V cos alpha, V sin alpha and nu. These are my definitions of advance ratio and inflow, total inflow you may call it because I have defined it by omega r tip speed, but only thing is I do not know what is alpha. Okay. When I am hovering, you may say alpha is 0 because I am having straight weight is below. But please understand, suppose the weight is not right on shaft, weight can be anywhere here, there. So, that depends on even in hover, you can tilt it, okay. but anyway mu is 0, therefore it does not matter in hover case. So, in forward flight, you need to know alpha, that means what is the pitch attitude of the helicopter, which you will not know beforehand. Okay. So, in all our formulation, what we are going to do next, we will simply say, hey, I know mu, I know lambda, but please understand this lambda is V sin alpha plus nu. Now, nu is the induced flow, it can be any model you can assume uniform flow, you can assume Dries model or you can assume Mangler and square model, you can have various inflow models because my nu is changing, it can change with uh, location, okay. but for simplicity of this, I am assuming it is constant. Okay. This is constant uniform which I will get it from basically the momentum theory in forward flight which I mentioned the last class or before. Okay. Now, you know how do you get that inflow. Assuming that you know this because I will tell you just uh, for see the inflow expression was this right, either this or this okay, because you multiply by omega r you get the nu. But this requires again alpha. So, you see to get the inflow you need to know the alpha. Only when you define the alpha you know mu. So, it is like one is related to the other. So, there will be an iteration in forward flight if you want to solve the flight condition that is basically the trim or equilibrium. To do that you need to start with only symbols and using that we will derive all the expressions for this, we will get the expression for the 6 T H Y and then moments, torque, roll moment, pitch moment, all of them we will obtain in forward flight and this is where the lot of complexity is there. Okay. Now, of course, this I mentioned to you last time. How will I describe my flap motion? I am assuming my flap is periodic. Okay. That means, because it is going round and round, my velocity is varying. So, I make the assumption first that this is going to be my flap motion, but I knock out the higher harmonic terms, I neglect them and I try to give a physical meaning to these three which are nothing but this is the coning because collective all the blades go up simultaneously that we call it coning. Then if they tilt longitudinally that you call it 1 c and this is lateral tilt that is 1 s. Of course, the other things are all rest of the perturbations you may call it in the tip path plane. Now, you see I have essentially kind of define what type of motion, what my axis system is and what my mu and lambda. 
okay using this how will i get my aerodynamic load first but please understand i am assuming mu lambda beta you may ask how will i get beta naught 1 c 1 s how will i get it okay because that nobody is going to supply to you i am only saying it is periodic and you can write it any periodic signal you can write it as a fourier series this is essentially a fourier series okay and your pitch input is given i here okay so this is the pitch input or you can call it the pilot input which goes to the main rotor we are talking about only main rotor please understand now and then these are the velocity components and this is the blade motion flap motion that is all using this how do we get the aerodynamic load at any cross section ok is it clear this is what but this is the most primitive I would call it because in the helicopter this is the simplest one you can have because this part is uh, I will do it on the board for clarity ok ok oh the symbol now the symbol I use T for thrust ok T is the thrust H is the longitudinal force and Y is the side force side force to the helicopter this is a symbol please understand I am using the same symbol ok ok now I understand because this is a standard symbol which people use T H for longitudinal force Y for side force ok capital all are uppercase and then you can have moments please understand you can have a moment M X M Y and M Z ok M Z is basically your torque all right and if you know the rotor rpm torque you can get the power that is all now you have these defined we have to go and get expressions for thrust h y m x m y torque these six quantities that means I know what are the loads that act on the hub knowing this but still in uh, assuming this there are unknowns that is why I am again emphasizing the unknown is alpha I do not know and here I do not know beta naught beta 1 c beta 1 s I am neglecting all the higher harmonics again please understand I am neglecting all of them because if I do not neglect it is uh, your expressions everything will become messy very big ones so we make assumptions ok now let us start with the the simple formulation ok the transformation so you understood this ok we will come back to this figure later also ok now how do we get the because of we will write the transformation matrix the transformation matrix because E So, this is hub fixed non rotating ok. This is hub fixed rotating. this is the transformation ok cosine psi you have x minus sin psi this is orthogonal transformation all of them are orthogonal if you want 
from this to this you simply transpose of that because this is an orthogonal so inverse is transpose okay all right this is a simple transformation then you have to have another transformation between this system and this system because this is the blade fixed coordinate system rotating so i will write now here y2 E x 1, E y 1, E z 1. This is blade fixed rotating. And I am assuming my blade is rigid. It is a rigid blade, it can only do like this. Okay it is not a elastic blade. So, please understand it is a rigid blade assumption only flap motion. Okay. That it now you have this transformation you need to know for getting the aerodynamic loads on the cross section of the blade you have to know the velocity components. Okay. The velocity you have from two sources one is due to the motion of the blade, another one due to the motion of the vehicle. Okay. So, first you say motion of the blade that means velocity at any particular cross section because we say it is a rigid blade cross section is fixed. So, you draw a line that line is you say your pitch axis line okay or you may call it elastic axis line because that is the pitch axis about which you are actually changing your blade pitch angle. I want velocities obtained at that point because you may ask if this is the where velocity at which point I will get it you may ask. Okay. So, our this is the axis of pitch and in the design of rotor blades this is a usually for a subsonic 25 percent card is the aerodynamic center. Okay. Then you have learnt about uh, shear center in structures and you have learnt mass center for every section. In the design of rotor blades what you try to do is you try to bring every center here okay 25 percent every center aerodynamic center is shape which is a subsonic you can take it as 25 percent but mass center that is why they put a leading edge mass to shift the cg once they design leading edge mass they put such that the cg also comes center of mass at 25 percent card elastic axis of the structure is also at 25 percent and pitch axis is also at 25 percent. Okay, please understand everything they try to it is a very complex design it is not that easy it goes through several iterations and then finally, they will try to fix it Okay, put it there the idea is you do not want to introduce too many couplings because if the mass center is somewhere there if it start doing then it will have its own inertia. Okay, there are problems. So, let us say this is our reference line 25 percent card and this is what my pitch axis is also usually the pitch axis for the rotor blade is kept at 25 percent card. Okay. Now, I define the velocity components u tangent and u 
that is all I am going to because you realize you can find out velocity at any point because this point will have different velocity because if you are which is changing about this axis this will have different velocity component right. So, which point you will really take the velocity. So, these are all very basic questions now you start thinking okay what do I do how the aerodynamic loads are obtained now you say okay let me go for CFD or a wind tunnel wind tunnel what they do is they put that they will rotate about 25 percent card okay which they will do that and then get the loads. So, these are some of the when you really start doing only you start realizing hey there are so many things which we have to know before we really start analyzing or understanding otherwise books will simply take it okay take oncoming flow because it is not a fixed aerofoil please understand because this is a moving moving one wind it is doing something and your pitch angle is changing continuously that means it is no longer a static problem it is a dynamic problem. So, we do not have assume we do not have any dynamic data we only know static if you give me what is the angle of attack I will give you what the lift is. So, every instant I am assuming this is the angle of attack. So, this is what I call it the quasi static approximation because even though my pitch angle is continuously changing that means I am oscillating my blade it is a dynamic situation, but I do not consider that. So, this is another first another assumption we make in getting aerodynamic loads purely from what you have learnt in aerodynamics 1 given the aerofoil what is the angle of attack take it and then put it. When you want to complicate a little bit little bit little more then you say ok let me introduce unsteady aerodynamics ok, but we will not do that. So, I am going to take this. So, uh, for me when I am trying to get the velocity expression I will just take the 25 percent which is the reference line ok. So, I am going to say what is my position vector this is my origin please note origin origin all the origin are fixed same position vector I take a point P on the reference I will say Okay. R is the position vector of this is R ok any point because that is in the deformed axis ok I have to get the velocity if you want to get the velocity there are one way one way is you convert x 2 to using this transformation relation to x 1 and then again differentiate or another way is I am not going to do I can directly go ahead and differentiate ok. You can do many ways that is why I said basic dynamics is very important here because when I differentiate velocity of that point I will write velocity of point P r dot but r is a constant. So, that means E x 2 is a varying what is the angular velocity of this coordinate system x 2 with respect to fixed frame fixed system is a capital X capital Y capital Z ok. This is what you need to be careful is it clear because basic dynamics is very important. Another way slightly easier way is you know that this is my omega x 1 is rotating with the omega which is the rotor angular velocity with respect to capital X capital Y capital Z. 
So, one axis rotation, okay. whereas when you go to x 2, it is not one axis rotation, because you are also rotating about this, because the flap y 1, flapping is also a rotation. Okay. So, when you want to define rotation of x 2, y 2, z 2 with respect to fixed frame, you have to include capital omega, you have to include flap. So, that will be like this, if you define omega here, this will be omega e z, because that is the z axis counterclockwise rotation positive, but my flap is about what axis? Flap is clockwise about y 1, y 1, y 2 both are same. So, I will have minus y 1 or y 2 both are pretty much same. Okay. You can put it actually y 2 is better, because you have to convert to y 2 only. Okay. Because y 1, y 2 both are same. Now, you see this is along z direction e z, this is along y 2 direction, this is defined along x 2. So, we have to get the velocity, that means convert all these vectors in x 2, y 2, z 2, then only you can get the velocity, you know that r dot because the position vector is r is fixed. So, that dot is 0. So, you will get omega cross okay. this is what the basic dynamics omega is the angular velocity of the coordinate system all right and this is the position vector now you convert this omega you know e z that means e z basically e z 1 then you put it e z 1 here and then get it in this coordinate system okay so, you will have, uh, maybe can I erase this part, y 1, y 2, see x 1, y 1, z 1, flapping is coming out of plane, I am, this is flapping, okay. this I call it beta, but once it comes up that is x 2, that is why x 2 and z 2, this is z 1, z 1 and z are same. Okay. y 1 and y 2 are same, all right. and now this is the beta is the angle, time rate of change is the angular velocity beta dot. Now, I have to convert this into in the coordinate system of, but I will write it as you put it omega, I am writing directly. Plus sir. Okay. Because please note, I have put omega here, omega is omega, that omega comes here, omega sin beta x 2, omega cos beta z 2. Okay. Now, I know R p, I know omega. So, I can calculate my velocity 
velocity of the point P is this is what and here it is okay now what is vp velocity of the point p is x2 is 0 y2 omega r cos beta into E y 2. Okay. Okay. Now, this is the velocity of the body. Now, what is the velocity of air? minus of this, but you have to add velocity of the helicopter also. See helicopter is now going forward. So, I will have these are the two components which are due to the vehicle. So, I will write the vehicle velocity. So, I erase this part now. Now, these are all not necessary. due to blade okay what we are writing now is it is due to vehicle and inflow this is a quarter card point velocity that's all yes okay now this is due to vehicle velocity or you may hub velocity actually the origin because velocity of the origin you have to take because the hub is moving and the blade is rotating. Okay. So, you have to add the velocity of the hub also into that right. So, that is what we are getting here, but here I am directly writing instead of hub velocity. I am putting it in terms of air. Okay. This is body motion, this is air, but if I want total then I will subtract this from here. Okay. Now, this and then your lambda, lambda is in the z direction downward. So, I will put minus lambda omega r easy okay now you see these two are in x and z so you substitute that get it in this again put it get it in this okay in x2 y2 so you go through that full transformation so you will get i'll write the final velocity of relative air at aerofoil at airfoil at P or you may call it point P. This is nothing but what? You take this velocity and you subtract this. Okay. So, that is this expression minus v p okay this is what your final velocity expression is but you can write this whole thing now 
I will put it here. What is V R? Mu omega r in the x direction that will have a cosine psi and then it will have a minus sin psi. Then again you have to substitute here and then get it so that the whole expression will become mu Okay. Omega R cos beta Okay, so, I am carrying on this here plus not plus actually it will be a minus sign minus mu omega r cosine psi sin beta plus r beta dot plus lambda omega r cos beta e hat z 2. Okay. Maybe I will write it again. So, you see here mu omega r cosine psi minus lambda omega r sin beta e x 2, then minus omega r cosine beta plus mu omega r sin psi this is along y 2 and this is a minus sign mu omega r cosine psi sin beta plus r beta dot plus lambda omega r cos beta this is along e z 2. Okay. Is it clear? you have now three components of velocity you go ahead and you substitute and get it you take that as an exercise now i will write that and uh, just briefly mention then we can once i write the velocity expressions i am going to make approximation now okay and that is what is the key because you make approximations. What kind of approximation I am going to make? Beta that is the flap angle is small, okay, the first approximation. So, when I make beta small, sin beta is beta, cosine beta is 1. Then I also make another assumption. So, I will put V relative air. Okay. The first expression will be mu omega r cosine psi. I am going to get like this minus lambda beta omega r. Okay. Then this is minus omega r cos beta is 1. Sorry, that omega lower case r or upper case? Sorry, this is not upper case r, I am sorry. This is a lower case r. Sorry about that. Okay, please change that. That is not a because this is a lower case, please, at that location. Okay. Omega r cosine beta is 1 and then plus mu omega r sin psi e y 2. 
and then minus lambda omega r because I am writing this expression first then r beta dot then this expression plus mu omega r cosine psi into beta. Please understand there is a beta mu omega r cosine psi. Okay. Now I will briefly show the diagram and here again I make one more assumption. Lambda is also small. So I say beta is small, lambda is also small. So the product of neglected I am neglecting okay now you see I have written the expressions please understand this is along x2 along x2 means along the span of the blade it is going that is this okay you call it radial velocity okay but y2 is it is the velocity which is coming towards the leading edge minus sign is there that means it is coming towards because y2 is forward minus means it. so your aerofoil if you take this is my ut tangential which is omega r plus mu omega capital R sin psi. This is that velocity and the cross section and this is z2 with a minus sign that means it is coming down. So, I will put it this is up because the sign is already taken because z2 is up. So, up is lambda omega r plus r beta dot plus beta mu omega r cosine psi ok. Now you have u t u p that means and u r which is the radial velocity because please understand the radial velocity is going into the board because you now knew that this is my y2 axis z2 axis x2 axis ok. So, this is y2 x2 is going into the board this is z2 alright you have velocity component and you say my theta because as usual I am defining my theta which is rotation of the blade pitch angle only about its elastic axis which will happen about 25 percent card. So, I define this is my theta ok. Now, you got it this is what I have shown here we will continue next class ok.